G'day guys, Jason, Nick here on the Outer Farm. I've actually got Nick on the back of the camera today. Hi guys. I've had a few requests for some more cook-offs. It's been a while since I've done a cook-off because obviously work gets in the road and I thought tonight would be a perfect night, but it was sunny this morning when we first woke up and now it's come overcast, but we we're prepared to do it. So we're gonna bring it tonight, pizza. It's not just any pizza, it's gourmet pizza that anyone can do. So I'll explain more when we get to the kitchen. What I'll do now is I'll rub a couple of sticks together. Actually, I probably shouldn't. I think it's gonna rain. So we're limited time. So I'm gonna use a cigarette lighter. We've only got more time. I'll rub the two sticks and I'll show you how to start a fire that way. But right now, I need to get this fire started, get some coals, and then we'll jump in the kitchen and go through the ingredients. I think it might have been faster with two sticks, actually. Oh, here we go. Right, guys, so we're in the kitchen now. I mentioned before that this is the easiest pizza for everyone to make. The hardest bit about making pizza is actually in the dough. So if you're going to do it from scratch with the flour and the yeast and the water, you really got to give it time to rest, proof, and double in size, which anywhere could be two hours up to a couple of the, up to a couple of the days, they say, or you can put it in the fridge. So to make it easy, like I said, I promised you guys, if I had more time, I'd show you how to do that. But if you haven't got time, like we're time poor here on the property because we work all day, I've just gone the straight pizza bases from the shop. So that's taken all that guesswork out of it, two hours, letting it rest, letting it proof. It's just straight up, easy, anyone can do. So tonight, what we're gonna bring you is two pizzas. We're gonna bring you a chicken and bacon meat lovers. So we've got, oh, I just use the shortcut bacon here. So we use about four short, shortcut bacon pieces for the pizza and we just got a diced chicken which we've had over the last few days so we just got a chicken chicken there we pulled apart so we probably use I know a good handful of chicken on the top of the pizza so we'll cut all this prep work up later and we'll show you when we're making them how much we've used so also on this pizza I like to put a bit of this is Stubbs hickory sauce on the base with my tomato paste so we've got tomato paste. We couldn't get the pizza paste in the shop. They had none left, so just straight tomato paste. Bit of hickory with that. And with the spring onions, guys, I just use about four shoots of spring onions on each pizza. So that goes across both. And three button mushrooms. Use about one and a half mushrooms on both pizzas. Half an onion is ample for both pizzas because the onion goes a fair way. But on this pizza, on the meat lovers, we use about a third to half a capsicum and we've got avocado. So we use about half an avocado on each, so that'll go across both pizzas. We'll go through that later. And we use spinach and that goes across both pizzas. And with the cheese, guys, we, we got a mixture of both. We got shredded tasty here and we got mozzarella. So I like to use about a 30%, 40% shredded and then the rest mozzarella on top. And so when we're talking about the vegetarian pizza now, I'll go across that. So the only difference in these pizzas is we know the onions and the mushrooms, the avocado and the spinach, they go across to this one. We like to have, we put cherry tomatoes on the vegetarian. We use about four cherry tomatoes, cut them in half around the top, four or five. We use olives. We use probably half a dozen olives. They're, they're pitted, we just cut them in half, put them on top. And we had roast last night, so we had a bit of pumpkin. So I love pumpkin on my pizza. So we've got a bit of diced pumpkin there roasted we done on the fire. I normally have pine nuts, but we forgot to bring the pine nuts out. That's why the fry pans, we normally like to roast a few pine nuts and put them on top. We forgot them. And just to add a bit of colour, instead of using red capsicum, we got sweet, baby sweet orange capsicum. And always feta cheese on a uh, vegetarian pizza, guys. You can't beat it. So that's half a, that's a 200 gram block of feta cheese. So that's... There's 100 grams left in that one. And on the top of mine, I like to put garlic areoli. I'll show you that, and that's the secret I do over here with these two as well. I think I mentioned, we use the um, spicy peri peri mayonnaise and the barbecue sauce on top. But I'll go through that when I'm making them. So I think I've covered everything, Nick. Have I anything I've missed? No, I think you've done a good job there, Doug. Right, guys, what we'll do is we'll go through, cut this prep up, and we'll put them in individualized plates, and then we'll make the peaches in front of you. Whilst I'm cutting up this prep, I said to Nick, I should show the guys how to dice avocado the fast way. A chef 
Trevor Henderson, I mentioned him before, he showed me this trick when I used to do a bit of work on Fraser Island during my, during my schooling holiday. So what you do guys is just cut it in half. So you've got your half avocado there, or it's a matter of then, and just cut the dice size you want. So go right down. Mine, I'm using about, I don't know, half an inch to 10 mil here. So cut it that way, all the way through. And then just turn him round and just cut him the opposite direction, all the way through. All the way through, so you can feel the skin underneath. And then it's this case of get, just getting your finger in there, and it's that'll just all come out, already diced. Finger in. Then you've already got your diced avocado ready to go. I've seen other people do it other ways where they get the spoon in. I've done one there, that there, and I've also done the other half there. So it comes out really good and diced. I've seen other people, the way they do it, they get the spoon in and try and scoop the whole out half, and sometimes it can get messy. This has come out really good, so I better get back to it. We got all the prep cut up now, guys. I'll get in the cold to come in and give you a look. So we sliced and diced everything like we said. So onions are all sliced, cubed. I like them little squares. Yeah, mushroom sliced, sliced, cubed. So yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure you guys will work it out. And that's the one for the chicken and bacon. So what I'll do now is I'll actually go through and prepare the bases now. So you don't want too much tomato paste on your bases, guys, because then it'll get soggy. So that's probably, I'll put on one there. I might go a touch more on that one. That's probably one and a half two tablespoons max dessert spoons actually if you go any more than that really get soggy that's probably all you need do the other one one and a half that's about all you need on this one this is going to be the chicken and bacon this is where i put a lot I like to put a bit of hickory sauce on the base of this one this is the only place i use this hickory sauce so just drizzle that over and this can be any sauce guys you want a hot chili sweet chili just, just once again, not too much, because it will make that base soggy. And just give that a stir through. Just give that smoky flavour, especially on the meat lovers. Oh, sorry, the barbecue chicken we do. Love it. So that's all we need with that, guys. So the next I put on is the onion. So there's enough onion there. So that's half an onion. So you want to put a bit on both. A bit around the top. Don't go too fussy, it's not rocket science, just throw them on, as long as it's pretty well even all the way through. Then what we've got to put on there, we'll put a few basil leaves. Sorry, spinach leaves. Got that wrong. So just spinach leaves around on the base. Like I said, just even when you spread them around. Try and, this will end up cutting in eight pieces, so definitely try and get on the eight pieces. That's even done there, across here. That was only like a couple of small handfuls of leaves there, guys. It wasn't that many. Steal from that one. That's pretty good. So I'll set that to one side, because the other ingredients for that one, for the meat lovers over here, I'll make this vegetarian now, finish this base off, so both bases are the same. I Righty. think we have our first customer already. Oh, oh Butchie's there, he's, he'll be drooling in a minute. I think he so, already is. Spread the mushrooms out, guys. Like I said, this was three mushrooms, so it's approximately one and a half mushrooms per pizza. Evenly do those ones. See, like I said, you get a fair bit, and you only cut them thin, guys. You get a fair bit of mushrooms out of one and a half mushrooms. So, like I said, that's one and a half. So we use three for both. So once we've done that, now it doesn't matter in any order, guys. Any order you want. I need to put these capsicum on. These are those baby sweet orange capsicum. I just cut them in strips. That was, you know, they're only small, so use one and a half, up to two if you want to. But there's heaps there. that what we throw on now we'll throw on the olives i think i used 10 10 olives guys i think it said eight but yeah threw on 10 pitted olives cut them in halves try and even distribute those across the top that's probably about it and just throw on the oh, it doesn't matter now i might go throw on a bit of the avo that was half an avo half for each pizza that's that. 
That looks pretty good. Righto, next we'll throw on the pumpkin. And I said this is, oh, I'm not sure how much pumpkin we had left over. We had roast last night, but this is only, oh, how many pieces would you say, Nick? That was probably... Of whole pieces? Or... Yeah, oh, it wouldn't even been a quarter of a pumpkin, would it? Oh, no, over? no, 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 not even. About an eighth of a pumpkin. Pumpkin's always nice on vegetarian pizzas. Oh, mm. sensational. Spewing, I didn't get the pine nuts, though, but... Especially with feta cheese. Righty odie, so that's that. Last thing, might put a bit of garnish. Just spread your spring onions through there so it falls down all those crevices. Try and take them out to the edge, sort of where we can. You don't want them hanging right out because you don't want all that falling into your camp oven. It's that. Okie dokie, so all we've got left now is we put on a few cherry tomatoes. I think I cut up six, if I can remember rightly. Just evenly distribute these. And like I said, guys, these aren't normal pizzas you get from a commercial shop. You don't get that much vegetables on your pizzas you buy at the shop. And if you have a look at how tall that is, that's about an inch. It's about 30 minutes, 30 centimetres thick. But you've got to be also mindful that this is going in a camp oven. You don't want it too high and overloaded because I'll show you the reason why when I get across to that camp oven. There's a special way you do them. If you overload them too much, they're going to get right up close to the lid. I'll explain that sentence I just said, when I get close to the oven, you'll understand why. Right, oh, so that's probably it. Let's about finish that one. And like I said, that is really high. Mm. Get Nick to come in, let's finish that one off. Might as well go straight over now and we'll do the barbecue meat lovers. Same again, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll start here. Put the capsicum down. Like I said, I had like a big bit of red capsicum, add a bit of color. You can also add chili flakes on here as well. I like mine really hot, especially on the barbecue meat lovers, but Nick likes a bit of chili, but not as much as I do, so. So that's it. That's down, guys. Then we'll go on the mushrooms. That's done. Put the avo, oh, I might put a bit of chicken on actually, a bit of ham first, that's a bit flatter. It's not gonna pile up as much. Like I said, that was four rashes of short bacon. So there's less fat and less grind. Well, actually, there's no rind on the short bacon. They cut that off and there's no fat. So for all you guys that want to uh, lean up a bit like myself, I'm getting a bit of a pod there in my old age. The less fat, the better. I know fat's good for you, but try and cut it off where I can. righty odie, so that's that. Fair bit of there. Might put a bit of chicken on now. We shredded that part, shredded that chicken. I sort of pulled it in pieces, so it wasn't in big chunks. Otherwise, it stacks up too high. There's probably, oh no, a good handful of chicken there, guys. Shred it up. It's starting to make me hungry. We didn't have a chance for lunch today. Nick, Nick was working me hard. We've been pulling lantana all all afternoon, and I you know, know. He was working who hard. I said to her that I had to stop early because they're doing this pizza edition tonight, but she just wanted to keep going. But <laughs> she worked me right up to to two thirty, and I was pushing. Now the coals, we're going to yeah. struggle if you're by dark. But yeah, yeah I, you don't want it's like to work with Nick. When you meet Nick, you know she just <laughs> she just whips cracks that whip. Especially with the dogs too. Like yeah. oh yeah, look, look look how hard they work. They're just uh, they have the life. <laughs> Now, now that we're regenerative farming, they don't need to chase cattle. The cattle just come to you. Yeah, they do, that's all they do now is sleep all day. Yeah. So I'll just add this last bit, guys. Last bit addition to this is the shallots. Like I said, three, three sprigs. I finally cut them up. And that's probably it, guys. What we're going to do now is we'll head over and we'll get the coals and that ready. And I'll explain the process, how we put them in. So we're at the fire now guys, we're going to get ready to put this pizza in, so that's the normal trivet we use for the bottom of our camp oven, and that's not high enough, that's only 10 mil. Because we're putting coals underneath, if you just use that, it's going to burn the bottom of it, burn the bottom base of your pizza. What we use, this is about, oh, I think I measured, it's about two and a half inches, which converts to, I think it's about 60 mil height. So that's just a slice mushroom tin so anything from between two inches to that inch and to that two and a half inches to 60 mil height is good we get a nice crispy edge around our pizza the bottom's warm 
it gets a little bit of brown on it but if you want the crust a lot crustier we, we like it this way just drop it down so I think tuna tins are about an inch drop it down but I definitely wouldn't go below that inch because then you're gonna end up burning the base of your pizza so like I said 60 mil or go down on an inch if you like a bit more crustiness about it now because these pizzas are so heavy I'll get in the coal to have a quick look like I was saying, that's 60 mil high. I put that in front of that, and if Nicole shoots across, that is almost the height of that 60 mil. So each one of these pizzas, if you have a look, is roughly about 60 mil high. So that is a lot of filling. So that brings me on to the next topic. With our foil, you'll find if you get a slight rip in the our foil, it just cuts the whole lot, just pulls off. Whereas baking paper doesn't do that. And I'll show you why we use baking paper. So you probably want, oh, that's probably 500 mil there. So that's about a foot and a half of baking paper. So what we would do with the baking paper, you don't want to put that on top and put your pizza on there. Because when you go to lift your pizza out later, all the fillings will fold in on each other. We put our trivet on the baking paper, and then we get the pizza. We'll start with the vegetarian. So we put the trivet there, and we just slide him straight on, guys. Slide him off the tray, whatever. We use the cardboard. That's just come straight out of the packet of the pizza bases. So they become two handles now. That one just got a bit of tomato paste on it. Excuse me, guys. So that becomes your handle. Now that won't rip. If that was our foil and they had a slight tear, you wouldn't have a hope. It would just tear. So that's what we lower it into the trivet. So we'll go to the trivet now. We'll go to the sorry, we'll go to the camp oven and we'll get set up over there. We've been burning coals here for a few hours now. So this is ready to go now. So what we do, you have a base here. You don't want, I'll show you how much we got on the base. So you probably want that much on the base. Just spread that on the ground, evenly on the ground. So that's, the other thing I talk about is this camp oven here. I've had this here ever since I started the fire. You don't want to be cooking anything in a camp oven unless it's preheated. The reason that being is the moment you put it on there it's going to send those coals cold so make sure this is preheated before you use it we sort of turn it every 20 minutes do a 180 that way it's hot goes on your coals and it won't make them cold the handle is not too bad so i'll sling that across so we put that there guys i like to put a hole in the bottom of my tins and that stops any build up pressure if you're going to put them that way guys you're going to get a pressure build up even though it's cast iron, it's a bit rough, you're still best off punching that hole. But I like putting mine that way. That way you're not going to get they're going to have less pressure on the bottom than if you roll it up. So that just relieves the pressure from the heat. Evenly place them in there, and that gives you the height of the base you need. I'll go grab the pizza and we'll come back. So what we'll do now, guys, that's in. The baking paper's your handle. Throw it in the inside there. Just tuck them down, guys. That'll be your handles later. It doesn't burn. Remember, it's baking paper. It goes inside of an oven. Grab your lid. Throw them on there. And what you do, guys, you... see this is where it's different to other people. Other people I've seen throw their cheese on top and they do it all in one hit. Because ours is two inches thick, we like to give this 15 minutes and that'll that'll reduce the vegetables down a bit. And then we test it with our finger and it's pretty well warm after 15 minutes all the way through. Then we throw the cheese on for another 15 minutes. And that's the difference. If you put the cheese on now, with that being so thick that gourmet pizza, it's not going to be warm all the way through. The cheese is going to be melted off. It's going to be burnt. So if you're going to do big, thick pizzas, this is the way you do it. All right, guys. What I like to do is throw a bit of coals around the edges. That gives that crust on the outside of that pizza base. Have I got enough coals here? Throw the crust. So do I, darling. I'm getting hungry. And what we do then, on top, because you're only preheating this one, you only really want about that much coals. Maybe a little bit more. So if I had spread them over, you see I can still see the handle in there. So evenly spread them over. And like I said, this we know, leave that for 15 minutes. We'll lift the lid and then we'll have a look. Then we'll lift this lid and we'll check out the vegetables on the top of the pizza. Make sure they're warm before we add the cheese. Just leave that stuff on there guys in case you've got to put it back on. If you dust it off now, drop that over there with a clean finger. Oh yeah, that's that's oh 
that's quite hot all the way through. So this is the point where we add the cheese. So I like to go my bit of shredded first, so grab a bit of shredded cheese. Better off go sparingly at first guys instead of just throwing a big handful on. Try and get it around the edges. Try not to get too much on the paper. If it goes underneath the paper, it'll melt and then it'll stick to the bottom of the pizza. So they're a bit of shredded. Now we'll go the mozzarella on top of that. Same again guys, just throw them on. Around the edges first. Throw them on top. You can see the uh, nice bit of mozzarella, uh, not mozzarella. Cheese is starting to brown up, the feta. So that's probably it, guys. You know, it wasn't a handful, it definitely was a handful. It's probably half a handful of each, maybe a little bit more. So it's all trial and error. We'll grab my lid. Oh, there it is, the lid lifter. Now at this point, dump those coals off. Make sure that doesn't go on your new ones. Dump those coals off. Try not to get your lid back on the ground. Put it back there. You want a fresh set of coals. So this one here, guys, the amount of coals you want is you want to pile them up. Before it was only to the top of the lid, now you want it up above that lid. They're running low on coals. We normally have two piles going, but because we're restricted in the area, we only done one tonight, and we're chasing our tails with coals, so you didn't see us off camera. We were racing around with like chooks with the head cut off, just trying to get timber to get some fresh coals. So pile that on there, guys. Try and get a few more. got to try and keep enough. This is the issue, we only have one pile. So that's right up, see that guys? That's peaked right up the top. Throw a bit more around the bottom, that'll still be warm. I don't want to put cold stuff around, so pile it up around the side now. Don't worry about changing that out. So go around the side there. Pile him up. Now that's it guys, that's another 15 minutes. So we'll come back in 15 minutes and check that. That should have a nice brown crust on it and then it'll be right to go. Proofs in the pudding, we'll lift the lid and have a look. Just go easy, you don't want to dump those coals off guys, because if it's not brown underneath, you want to be able to put it straight back on, so just carefully knock any of the ash off, you don't get in. Oh yes, now that's perfect guys, that won't need any more browning, so what I'll do is I'll throw that lid over there. I'll take this over here, put it on our little timber table. Back. This is where the, the carry handles come in, come in handy, guys. Let's pull that paper back out now. Then there's a bit of cheese run off there. See how that paper's holding together really well. So I'll transfer that up to the table. Move that across. Transfer it under there. Now we'll just take. The pizza now guys, just carefully pull that paper back. And if it is stuck, this is stuck a little bit to the bottom. So just gently ease that under there. Give them a spin around. Look at that cheese melted off. And then we just throw on the serving tray. So that's just the pizza tray we use at home. But it comes in handy for the pizza cutter. So just transport that across. Easy as that guys. Take that rubbish out of the road. Yeah, well, what I like to do, this is where the sauce comes in guys, look at that, even the crust is nice and crispy. So this is that garlic areolo, I like, and this is on the vegetable pizza. Give that a trickle across there. So that's it guys, we'll cut it in eight pieces and we'll uh, have a taste. When you're cutting it through guys, just go down, if you try and come straight through, you're going to rip the topping off. So just ease it down like that. Oh yeah, that, that base is all that crispy. Cutting through. And this one through there. Rightio guys, what I'll do is I'll serve me and Nick a piece up. Nick won't, can't have any at the moment because she's still on the back of the camera. Poor Nick. Mm. Throw it there. Mwah. It's beautiful, Dale. Get this piece. 
So like I said, see it's not falling together guys, that's a large bit of pizza. Stringy cheese, sensational. See that's not falling together. Idea of having that cheese on top molds it together. See I can turn that over, little one tomato fell off. So that's it guys, you have a look underneath, it's not burnt. You know, nice and crisp on the edges. Bit of browning there. If you like your pizza any more browner than that, you can put another more ashes underneath if you want to, but this is perfect for us. It's nice and crispy base, and it's just slightly brown underneath. But like I said, if you want to put another layer of coals underneath that, before you, when you lift it up, put it underneath, put it down, put the cheese on, put the lid on, pile the lids, you can get a bit brown on that. But uh, I think I'm gonna run out of time, guys, for the second pizza. We're gonna have it after dark, so I'll, I'll taste this now, guys. Let you know. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Tell you what, for those people that love pizza, oh, that's the recipe for you guys. So on that note, guys, I could see Nick's cheese drool on the back of this camera here. So I'm enjoying myself, but she's starving, so we didn't have lunch today. So right, guys, have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening, guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later. Righto guys, thanks for hanging around. This is the second pizza now. I realise it's dark, hence why I've got the torch. I'll show you. So that's the chicken and bacon. That's got the drizzling of barbecue sauce and the spicy peri peri on top. So we're gonna cut up now and eat it, so uh, catch us later. <laughs>